Happy Easter, FBC kids. I'm so excited the day is here. Everything that we've talked about, the things that we've learned, the scriptures that we've read together, the stories that we've talked about has led to this day. And we learned that we can shine God's light by choosing Jesus, the true light in all darkness. God hears our cries from our darkest moments. And even when all hope seems lost, it never is with God. And today's story is going to glow your minds. Let's get started. Now it's time to go over all the different scripture spotlights that we've learned from this month. Are you ready? Let's glow. First, we learned that Jesus, God's son, had come to earth to tell everyone about God and shine God's light. And he got really upset when he walked into the temple and saw that it re resembled more like a marketplace, somewhere to shop and buy, chat with your friends, than a place to worship God. And he got mad about it. Now, not long after that, Jesus and his buddies shared a last supper where he revealed that not only was he going to die soon, but one of his friends, one seated at that very table, would betray him. And it happened just as Jesus said. Jesus was arrested and he had to stand trial in front of the guy in charge, the governor, named Pilate, who could clearly see that Jesus was innocent. And he was pressured by the religious leaders, those guys that stirred up the crowd, and that crowd that was screaming, crucify him, to release Barabbas and then sentence Jesus to death. So Jesus was nailed to a cross between two other criminals. After much pain and sadness, Jesus died. His body was taken down off the cross and it was placed inside of a tomb. And this gigantic, huge, oversized, heavy stone was rolled in place as a door in front of the tomb. Now, if this is where the story ended, it would be super dark and sad and hopeless but that's not our god let's check to see what the bible says happened on the third day of jesus's death brace yourselves it's the greatest most glorious thing to happen ever you ready we're going to john and we're going to read we're going to john chapter 20 and we're going to read the first 10 verses to start early on Sunday morning, while it was still dark, Mary Magdalene came to the tomb and found that the stone had been rolled away from the entrance. So she ran and she found Simon Peter and the other disciple, the one whom Jesus loved. And she said, they've taken the Lord's body out of the tomb and we don't know where they put him. Peter and the other disciple started out for the tomb and they were both running but the other disciple outran Peter and he reached the tomb first and he stooped and he looked in and he saw that the linen wrappings were lying there, but he didn't go in. Then Simon Peter arrived and he went inside and he also noticed that the linen wrappings were still there while the cloth that had covered Jesus's face was folded up and lying apart from the other wrappings. Then the disciple who had reached the tomb first also went in and he saw and he believed. For until then, he still hadn't understood the scriptures that said Jesus must rise from the dead. And then they went home. Interesting. So many weird things are already happening. Okay. On Sunday morning, which if you're celebrating Easter with us, that's what we're doing today. Sunday morning, Mary Magdalene goes to the tomb. And she thought she knew what she was going to see there. But she was blown away by the fact that Jesus' body was gone. Now, to prepare for someone for death in this time, it was the custom to wrap their body in these linen cloths. And there was a special shroud that was put over Jesus' face and Peter. And then the disciple whom Jesus loved was named John. And we're reading from the book of John, so he doesn't always say John or I. He's recording it. And he's writing down what happened, but we're talking about another disciple named John here. They were so confused. Uh, they came running up to the tomb. They're going on and they're like, what happened? But they shouldn't have been because Jesus had already warned them what was going to happen, that he had to die. He would come back to life. He would rise from the dead. Oh, yeah. John's like, I believe now. I remember he warned us about this. 
So let's see what happens next in our story. Let's read verses 11 through 18. Mary was standing outside of the tomb crying. And as she swept, she stooped and she looked in. Okay, because the other guys have gone home. Okay, she was looking. Do you want to know what she saw? Not just the linens that were left there. A few other things. Ready? She saw two white-robed angels. One sitting at the head and the other sitting at the foot of the place where the body of Jesus had been lying. Dear woman, why are you crying? The angels asked her. Because they have taken away my Lord, she replied, and I don't know where they have put him. She turned to leave, and she saw someone standing there. It was Jesus. But she didn't recognize him. Dear woman, why are you crying? Jesus asked her. Who are you looking for? She thought he was the gardener. Sir, she said, if you have taken him away, tell me where you have put him, and I will go and get him. Mary, Jesus said. She turned to him and cried out, Rabbi, which is Hebrew for teacher. Don't cling to me, Jesus said, for I haven't yet ascended to the Father. But go, find my brothers, and tell them, I am ascending to my Father and your Father, to my God and your God. Mary Magdalene found the disciples, and she told them, I have seen the Lord. Then she gave them his message. Mary was so lost in her grief. Okay, sorry, back up a little bit when she's still crying. Mary is so lost in her grief that she looks in, she sees these two angels, and she's just still sad and mourning and upset and just heartbroken. And she turns away, and there's a man standing there. The risen Savior, Jesus Christ, and she thinks he's the gardener. <laughs> and he's like, why are you crying? And she's like, don't worry, it's Jesus' body. And he's like, Mary, it's me. I'm Jesus. Of course, Jesus was alive. <sighs> I, I love this. I love it so much. Everyone knew that Jesus had been dead for three days. They knew they had taken his body off the cross. They had put him in the tomb. But there he was, once again, standing before her, perfectly alive and well. <laughs> so he tells Mary, go, tell my brothers. He's talking about his disciples, his followers. Tell them. I've not yet ascended to the Father, but I'm going to. I'm going to ascend to my Father and your Father, my God and your God. He's doing exactly what he promised. This is why we celebrate Easter. We celebrate the day that Jesus kept his promise to come back to life. And he gave us this reason to run and tell others the good news. Jesus is alive. Let's celebrate. The disciple whom Jesus loved, John. Yeah. You know, we talk about that when we study the book of John, and it always feels kind of silly to the grown-ups sometimes to be like, oh, John's writing about himself, the one that Jesus loved. But I think that Jesus' love was so strong and so blatant and so loud for John and his other disciples and his children and his people and his creation that John knew. He knew it so strongly that he was able to write down and put in the Bible the one that Jesus loved. Not only did John write the book of John, but later on in the New Testament, after Jesus has ascended and is no longer on earth but his promise remains, John goes on to write even more. And we're going to go further into the New Testament and we're going to read First John chapter 1, and then we're going to finish in chapter 2 just a little bit. But this is what John has to say even later on in his own ministry of sharing the good news of Jesus. We proclaim to you the one who existed from the beginning, whom we have heard and seen. We're talking about Jesus here. We saw him with our own eyes, and we touched him with our own hands. He is the word of life. This one, who is life itself, was revealed to him, us, and we've seen him. And now we testify and proclaim to you that he is the one who is eternal life. He was with the Father, and then he was revealed to us. We proclaim to you that we ourselves have actually seen and heard 
so that you may have fellowship with us. And our fellowship is with the Father and with his Son, Jesus Christ. We are writing these things to you so that you may fully share in our joy. John starts this by saying, we knew Jesus. He was the promise of God. He was flesh and blood sent to earth from God and we got to see him and touch him and talk with him and live with him and these are the things that he taught us and we're going to share them with you because that's what Jesus taught us. This is the message we heard from Jesus and now declare it to you. God is light and there is no darkness in him at all. So we are lying if we say that we have fellowship with God but go on living in spiritual darkness. We are not practicing the truth. But if we are living in the light, as God is in the light, then we have fellowship with each other. And the blood of Jesus, his son, cleanses us from all sin. If we claim we have no sin, we're only fooling ourselves and not living in the truth. But if we confess our sins to him, he is faithful and just to forgive us our sins and to cleanse us from that wickedness. If we claim we have not sinned, we're calling God a liar and showing that his word has no place in our hearts. My dear children, I am writing this to you so that you will not sin. But if anyone does sin, which we know that we do, we have an advocate who pleads our case before the Father. He is Jesus Christ the one who is truly righteous. He himself is a sacrifice that atones for our sins. And not only our sins, but the sins of all the world. Okay, so we know that Jesus died on the cross and rose again, and he did it for our sin. And we know there's no darkness in God, but sin is everywhere. Anytime that we go to a place without light, we're in the darkness. Anytime we make a choice without God, we are in the sin. Sin is a choice that hurts us or it hurts others or it harms our relationship with God or with others. It's pretty easy to understand sometimes when we know that there's sin, right? Now this passage is telling us that when we sin, we are separate from God. And instead of living in the light and in the truth, we're choosing instead to walk away from God and walk in darkness. It's so easy to sin. It's so easy to sin. We have to work so hard to, to keep from disobeying God like that. The scripture also tells us that it's not just the end, sin and darkness, and that's it. It tells us that if and when we do sin, we have hope. We have the answer to all of the problems, and it's Jesus. And because Jesus paid the price for sin by dying on the cross, rising from the grave, paying the debt of our sins, we can seek God's forgiveness and we can walk in the light again. It's not just about what Jesus did on the cross so many years ago. But it's also about what Jesus continues to do for us now. He still chooses to go for the cross for us. He still fights for us. And he still leads us to the way. And he still leads us to God. He is still the path. The cross is still the answer. The only way for forgiveness is still through Jesus. And he did it for all the world. And he can only do this. Because he died and rose again. And because we've learned Psalm 27, 1a, that when the Lord is our light and salvation, we have nothing to fear. So the verse tells us, the Lord is my light and my salvation. Whom shall I fear? What darkness can scare me when I've got God on my side? And this is my favorite part of Easter, where we decide that believing Jesus died and rose again, hearing it is not enough. Believing it, being convinced, yeah, but there's still something more, and that is accepting the salvation. 
Mishalia, how? How do I accept the gift? How do I tell Jesus that I believe? Well, the Bible tells us exactly how. I'm going to read you from Acts and from Romans. Now, in Acts, my guy, Paul, I do love a Paul story. Paul is literally in prison. He's in prison with a man named Silas. And the guy in charge of the prison, there's a big problem. And he thinks that he's going to be in big trouble for this big problem. The prison guard believes he's going to be in big trouble. And he brought out his own sword to kill himself. But Paul and Silas, because the guard thought that they had escaped, were like, stop, 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 stop. We're right here. We didn't leave. We're good. You're here. You're not in trouble. You're not going to be in trouble. And he fell down trembling before Paul and he, Silas. And he asked them, what must I do to be saved? And they replied, believe in the Lord Jesus and you will be saved. Believe. But that's not all. In Romans 11... Here we have a message that is very clear about faith. And this is what we preach. This is what the verse says. If you openly declare, and that means to say, to, to use your words and to believe it out loud, that Jesus is Lord and believe in your heart that God raised him from the dead, you will be saved. If you openly declare, and you openly believe, and you say it, God will save you. Jesus will forgive you. And all of this is a gift for you. I love it. So I'm going to do our prayer at the end. Thank you so much that we celebrate Jesus is alive. But if you would like to accept this gift of salvation, if you are ready, if that belief is ready for you to openly declare that Jesus Christ is Lord, and to save you from our sins, to forgive you of our mistakes. At the end of the prayer, I'll say a couple of things, and if you believe that to be true, you can say it and accept that gift as well. Thank you for celebrating Easter with us. Will you pray with me? Heavenly Father, thank you so much for being close to us, for giving us your Son, our Savior, that no matter where we are, you are always near to us. Your love is never ending, and you are the light in any darkness, for with you there is no darkness. Help us to keep walking in the light of Jesus. Lord, I pray for these kids and their families, for our church and our leadership and our community, that we can bring the light, that we can run and tell them that Jesus Christ is alive, that Jesus died and rose again. Thank you, Lord, for this Easter celebration where we can join together and praise you. Okay, if you would like to repeat after me, we're going to start now. Dear God, I am sorry for my mistakes. I believe that Jesus Christ is Lord. I believe that you are God of all. Forgive me for my sins. God, I ask you to come into my heart and wash it clean. Thank you, Father, for loving me. In your name we pray, amen. I am so glad we got to celebrate Easter together and I hope that we continue to learn more about Jesus Christ. And we are going to end it right here. Join us next week. We have so much more to learn and grow together. So let's glow. When you ask, you